Hey guys, Pastor Amber here with your midweek mentoring tip. The Lord has really put the story of the feeding of the 5,000 on my heart this week, and so I wanted just to share with you just a few um, insights that I got from, from the story after um, reading it and just diving deeper into it. And the first one is this, you know, at the time when Jesus, uh, or at the time when Jesus performs this miracle. The disciples had already been with him for um, for several years. This was a miracle that he performed during uh, towards the end of his ministry, and so they had already witnessed countless of his miracles, from um, healing the sick and raising the dead. And I thought it was interesting that when posed with with a situation of not having enough resources to to provide for these people. The disciples were kind of like awestruck. Where are we going to get enough money to feed all these people? And even if we did have enough, there would only be, only be enough for for everyone to have a bite. And how often do we do the same thing with the Lord? You know, like we've experienced His work in our lives up until w- where we are in our walk with Him. You know. And yet we still constantly, like the disciples in this story, we doubt, you know. And even if you personally have never experienced an outright miracle of someone being raised to raised from the dead or whatever, you know, salvation in itself should be evidence enough for us. If, if the Lord is able to our, take care of our salvation, our eternity, what makes us think that he won't intervene on on making sure that we have food to eat or money for our bills to be paid and how often just like the disciples we doubt too the second thing that stood out to me was the 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 significance of the meal that that was given to Jesus the gospel of John says that it was a little boy who who provided the meal and Culturally, in that day, children were not deemed as, as significant. They are very much more seen than heard. And so not only was the, the giver of the gift insignificant, but the gift as well was just as equally significant. The word says that it was barley loaves and some fish. And barley back in that day would have been deemed more as a food f- more suitable for animals than, than people to to eat and I don't know about you but whenever I hear the term you know the five loaves I get this picture in my head of, of French bread loaves but that's that's not even anywhere near the size of, of what we're talking about you can picture they're more kind of like a little small cakes and the fish that it that it was talking about wasn't again and whenever I think of it I get this picture in my head of you know like a salmon filet that you would get if you went out to a restaurant but it was more kind of like small sardine size and in that time those kinds of fish would have been used more as kind of to make like a relish to eat with the cake so it's kind of like I've heard I've heard one preacher mention how um, you could have equated it to like an ancient Bible times version of a a lunchable you know Um, it was given by someone who from society standards was was not significant and what he had to give was was of no value really and the last thing that stood out to me is this, was that Jesus at that point had told the people once, you know, presented with the problem, these people don't have, have anything to eat and we have nothing to provide for them except for this small meal. Jesus commands the people to sit down in groups and it says that they distributed to those who were seated as much as they wanted. And that term, as much as they wanted, literally means, it's a, it's a common term in the, the New Testament used for the Lord extending his best offer to the believer, wanting and desiring, desiring to birth his faith in them, which then empowers and manifests his presence. So it's almost like I get this picture of you're giving me, you're handing over to me the situation, the problem. And it was almost like the Lord saying, just sit down and rest, stop fretting, let me take care of it, trust me that I've got it. And to those who were willing to to sit down in in obedience to what he was telling them to do, he extended his best offer to them. It wasn't just enough for everyone to have a bite. It says that they ate 
as much as they wanted. In doing so, not only did he provide for their need, but it was a miracle that, that birthed faith and empowered and manifested his presence in their life. So the bottom line of everything, I just want to encourage you and, and myself in this, is let's not place limits on what God can do by holding back on, on not giving him what we have, even if society uh, seem, may say that it's not significant or you yourself aren't significant to our cultural standards. When we place what we have, big or small, in the hands of Jesus, there is no limit on what he can do both in us and through us because this story, the Lord didn't just provide for, for the little boy or just his disciples, but it says that it fed over 5,000 people. So let's not limit what God can do and let's be eager to give him what we have both both big and small and trust that when we place it in his hands he can do things beyond our imagine so father I thank you that Lord you don't need us but you choose to partner with us and um, Lord that we can trust that when we walk out in obedience to you and and offer you our, our gifts and our talents whether they may be big or may be small Lord that we we know that you can use them to do mighty things. So help us not to doubt your ability to work in us, Lord, and that as we step out in those times of faith, despite our circumstances, Lord, that you would, you would do what your word says, that you would, you would, in doing so, extending your best offer, providing for our needs and then some, and, and continue, continue to birth in us a, a new faith and empowerment in us and, and um, manifest your presence in us and to the lives of those around us. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen.